Hello friends, in this video, I'm going to discuss about how to interpret chest x-ray in your day-to-day -day clinical practice. Now you might ask, why chest x-rays? If you are a practicing doctor, then chest x-ray is probably one of the most common investigation that we request and interpret on a day-to-day -day basis. This is regardless of your country of practice and your healthcare settings. Despite being so common, it is probably one of the least appreciated area of our clinical practice because either we don't know how to interpret chest x-ray properly or we don't follow a systematic approach and miss some very important findings. The second reason is that you will find questions on chest x-ray in most of the medical exams. This could be MBBS, MD, MRCP, PLAB, or even respiratory SCE. So if you are preparing for any of these exams, then please watch this video till the end. If you are thinking, who am I to teach you about chest x-ray, then I am a respiratory physician with more than 10 years of practice in this specialty and interpreting chest x-ray and acting on it is an unavoidable part of my job. If you encounter an abnormal chest x-ray in your clinical practice, then most likely you will try to contact a radiologist to help you out. But if it is middle of night and you have a very unwell patient in front of you and you need help about a chest x-ray, then it will probably be an on-call respiratory physician or a pulmonologist whom you are going to contact to help you out. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more similar contents. Let's start off with the basics of chest x-ray interpretation. In the UK, all the hospitals will have PAX system. So you will have to interpret and read the radiology images on the computer screen and not on our x-ray film like we do in many government hospitals in India. To start off with the basics, in an x-ray, black means air and white means soft tissue or bones or even blood vessels. So in a chest x-ray, these black areas are full of air and they are lungs. Don't be surprised by this big white blob in the middle of x-ray. This is heart and this is normal. Every chest x-ray tells you a story and your job is to be able to read the story. First thing that you need to know in a story is who is the main protagonist of this story. Similarly, in a chest x-ray, you should be looking for the name of the patient and date and time of the x-ray. This will also say the projection of the chest x-ray like AP or PA film and sometimes there will be a mark to indicate the left and right side of the patient. Next thing that you need to note is the rotation of the x-ray. The way you do that is by measuring the distance between the medial end of the clavicle on both the sides with the spinous process. This distance should be equal on both the sides. If this is a rotated film, then this distance will become unequal. The next thing to note is the exposure of the x-ray you should be able to see the vertebra behind the heart in a properly exposed film. But if this is an overexposed film, then the black areas or the lungs will become more black and they may mimic the appearance of emphysematous lung. It is also important to identify if x-ray is an expiratory or inspiratory film. In an expiratory film, you could see some infiltrate or areas of consolidation which disappear when you repeat the chest x-ray on full inspiration in the same patient. So this is very important that you do the x-ray in a full inspiratory film. If you are a medical student or beginner in learning about chest x-ray, then you should follow a systematic ABCDE approach where A means airway, that includes the trachea, bronchus, and the hilum. Breathing means lung and the pleura. C for cardiac, 
D for the diaphragm and E for everything else like lines, pacemaker, any artifact, any implant, heart valves, etc. If you are an experienced practitioner, then you can follow a different approach that is outside to inside approach where you see each and every structure very carefully and make sure that they are normal. And before you finish your x-ray interpretation, always go back and review the hidden areas of an x-ray. We will come to them in the later part of this video. So the first thing that we need to note is the airway or the position of the trachea, carina, bronchi and the hilar structures. The trachea should be central in a normal chest x-ray. Now before you try to assess the position of the trachea, make sure that your chest x-ray is not a grossly rotated film because in a rotated film the trachea will never be central. Deviation of trachea can be due to pushing or pulling. Pushing can occur in the opposite lung due to accumulation of fluid, air or a large tumor. Whereas pulling could be due to lobar collapse in the ipsilateral lung, pleural fibrosis or lung resection surgery or pneumonectomy. The next step is assessment of B or assessment of the lungs and the pleura. It's very important that you review the costophrenic angle to make sure there isn't any small pleural effusion. The next step is assessment of C or the heart shadow. You need to know about the heart borders and the adjacent lung anatomy. Like for example, in the left heart border, this is the lingula of the lung which is overlying the left heart border. Whereas on the right heart border, you will have the right middle lobe. The diaphragm is adjacent to the right lower lobe. You will have the pulmonary artery in this region and any abnormality of pulmonary artery area will show up as a bulging suggesting pulmonary hypertension. And this is the aortic knuckle. When you have a aortic dissection, you will notice some abnormality in the aortic knuckle. Next is D or the diaphragm. Make sure there isn't any lung mass adjacent to the diaphragm and you can appreciate the diaphragm contour all the way along the chest x-ray. And E is everything else like a pacemaker, chest strain coming from outside, any heart valve or prosthetic aortic valve, any breast implant in the patient. We will see some of the examples as we go along. These are some of the examples where you can see the deviation of the trachea. Like in this patient, there is a massive pleural effusion and trachea is shifted to the opposite side. Whereas in this x-ray, you can see a pneumothorax causing shifting of the trachea on the other side. In a patient of tension pneumothorax, you will see that the trachea and the mediastinal structures will be shifted away to the opposite side. And if the patient is clinically hypotensive, then this is a diagnosis of tension pneumothorax. In this patient, you can see an air fluid level, which is suggestive of hydropneumothorax. You can also see air fluid level in a patient of lung abscess or infected cyst like hydrated cyst of the lung. This patient has pneumothorax and significant subcutaneous emphysema which is visible outside the lung fields in this chest x-ray. You can see a chest drain going in the right side. In this slide, you can see an example of lower lung collapse. So the first x-ray here, you could appreciate that there is a shadow behind the heart which is described as a cell sign. And also, if you look carefully, the medial border of the diaphragm is not very well delineated on the left side. Also, the hilar structures on the left side are 
pulled slightly downwards this suggests that this patient have left lower lobe collapse this is important because left lower lobe collapse might mean there is obstruction of the left lower lobe bronchus which could be secondary to a endobronchial lung cancer if you find a scenario where you have a young female with asthma admitted to hospital and they develop a left lower lobe collapse in that case this is likely secondary to mucus plugging and the treatment will be chest physiotherapy if the question ask what is the next best investigation for assessment of left lower lobe collapse then the answer will be bronchoscopy obviously this patient will have a ct scan done eventually but a bronchoscopy will give you more information as compared to a ct scan in this chest x-ray you could appreciate homogeneous opacity on the left side but the left hemidiaphragm is quite clearly delineated also the aortic knuckle is visible quite well with a rim of air surrounding it this is known as luft sichel sign and this is classical of left upper lobe collapse so the first x-ray on this slide is showing there is an opacity on the right lower zone we can't really see the right hemidiaphragm clearly and part of the right heart border is visible but not all the way through this is an example of right lower lobe and possibly part of right middle lobe collapse on the other x-ray you could clearly see the hemidiaphragm on the right side but the heart border is not really clearly visible so and you can see there is a consolidation or a collapse adjacent to the heart border so this is an example of right middle lobe collapse the way we differentiate and localize this kind of abnormal lesion is by following the silhouette sign in silhouette sign any intrathoracic radio opacity if it is in contact with the border of the heart and the aorta on the left side will obscure the border right lower lobe is adjacent to the diaphragm so you can't really see the diaphragm if it is a right lower lobe pathology whereas the right middle lobe is adjacent to the right heart border so anything to do with the right middle lobe will obscure the right heart border if you follow this then you can localize the lesion anatomically in this example you can see the homogeneous opacity of the left side and the heart is pulled towards the left side along with tracheal deviation on the left side so there is a significant volume loss on the left side this is suggestive of left lung collapse if you look carefully you could sometimes see a bronchus cutoff sign suggestive of some kind of a tumor on the left main bronchus before you finish your assessment of a chest x-ray always go back and double check some of the hidden areas and commonly missed areas in a chest x-ray they are lung apices on both the sides retrocardiac region behind the heart behind the diaphragm periphery of the lungs and the hilar regions like in this chest x-ray if you look carefully you can see a left apical lung tumor which is suggestive of a lung cancer in this x-ray you can see a globular structure behind the heart sometimes you can even see air fluid level in this structure so this is an example of hiatus hernia again if you look carefully in this chest x-ray you can see a line extending from the superior mediastinum and going to the lower part of the mediastinum this is esophagus and this is an example of achalasia cardia also if you remember we have seen an example of a shadow behind the heart as a cell sign in left lower lobe collapse in this x-ray if you look carefully you could see there is a line on the right paratracheal region this is suggestive of azygous lobe 
On this x-ray, you can see right lower lobe consolidation, but if you look outside the lung fields, you can appreciate that the humerus is dislocated from its glenohumeral joint. Again, if you look carefully in this chest x-ray, which is apparently normal, but if you look outside the lung and in the bony skeleton, you could appreciate there are bilateral cervical ribs. You could often miss this kind of finding if you are not following a systematic approach. This chest x-ray is showing some abnormal areas near the right hemidiaphragm and if you look closely, you could see some kind of a bowel shadow between the diaphragm and the liver. This is known as Chilarditi syndrome and it means interposition of colon in between the diaphragm and a liver. This is usually an asymptomatic condition and doesn't need any treatment. This is a classical chest x-ray showing bilateral lung nodules and lung masses, which is quite classical in cannonball metastasis from GI malignancy or ovarian malignancy. This chest x-ray is showing bilateral miliary shadows on both the lung fields. This is quite classical of miliary tuberculosis, but be aware that miliary shadows can happen in non-tuberculous condition as well, like sarcoidosis, pneumoconiosis, some fungal infection, and thyroid malignancy metastasizing to the lungs. This is a test chest x-ray, and we are going to revise everything that we have learned through the course of this video. So the first thing is to make sure that you have the patient details on this chest x-ray and you know the date and time of this x-ray. Also, you can see the projection PA film is mentioned on this x-ray and you know that this is left side because it is mentioned on the x-ray. The next step is exposure. You can see the vertebral bodies behind the heart. So this is a decently exposed film. It does not look like an expiratory film. And then when you assess the airway, they look central. There is no obvious hyalur abnormality. The lung fields look normal. And you can see a very clear costophrenic angle on both the sides. The heart borders are quite clear and there is no evident cardiomegaly. The diaphragm margins are also very crisp in this x-ray. When you look beyond the lungs, you can see bilateral breast implants. And this is the gastric bubble on the left side, which is normal. Nothing very obvious on the ribs in this x-ray. So as of now, we can't really appreciate any abnormality. But if you remember, we have forgotten to check the rotation of this chest x-ray, which is one of the initial assessment of a chest x-ray. So let's try to do that. You can see this is the medial end of the clavicle. This is the spinous process, but I can't really see any clavicle on the left side. So there must be something wrong here. There are very few pathologies we can actually destroy the clavicle. And one of them is malignancy. So this patient eventually was diagnosed with a lung cancer that metastasized and destroyed the left clavicle. So if you are not following all the steps systematically, it's very common for you to miss this kind of a significant finding. And in that case, you will miss a diagnosis of lung cancer from a chest X-ray. In conclusion, if you are a beginner, or a medical student, then try to follow a systematic approach, A, B, C, D, E approach. And then before you complete your assessment, go back and review the hidden areas of the lungs. In a medical examination setting, always think hard before you utter this is a normal x-ray because in all probability, the x-ray that will be given to you in exams will never be normal. So if you can't find the abnormality, try to follow the systematic approach and definitely there will be an answer to your question. Friends, this is the first medical content 
video on my YouTube channel. If you want to see more and more videos on similar medical topics which might help you in your examination, please let me know in the comment section below and please hit the like button if you find value in this content. Thank you for watching.